it took me a while to realize how beautiful my skin color was just because it wasn't beautiful in the eyes of the people around me when I was growing up. My name's Dawn Richardson Wilson. I'm a full-time athlete, part-time, part-time, full-time student. <laughs> Having the opportunity to compete in the Olympics is honestly a lifetime experience that I have never even pictured. And I could probably count on my hands how many black individuals there were. And that just goes to show you that there's not a lot of diversity when it comes to black people being in a winter sport. It is hard to find that connection of okay, like I see myself in that person, but I think as society evolve, a lot of us will come from different backgrounds. Stereotypes create like a space for that person in that specific race to feel like because I don't match this criteria, therefore I'm not who I say I am. It's like, you're black. You must run fast. Do you need to wear sunscreen? Wow, is that your natural hair? And you're like, would it be acceptable if I went up to a Caucasian female and, be, and asked, is that your natural hair? She'd look at me like I was, you know, crazy. I believe in order to make people understand that what they're saying is making me uncomfortable, I have to also take that step to being able to communicate like that's not making me feel good. This is why. Here's how to move forward for whoever you talk to next. To be an ally, it doesn't have to be loud. You know, it can be on your own time. It doesn't have to be filmed. It shouldn't just be, let me hop on and then show that I'm supporting. And then as soon as I see that other people are not, you know, talking about as much, my support dies. It's like, we can promote, you know, George Floyd, we can do this and we can do that. But then once the trend dies, we stop talking about it. And that's the issue. The issue is we're not continuously talking about and continuously working on how to make it better for the future. I believe that there is hope in the future generations because they are so open to being open, you know, like they're very expressive. And I feel like they can teach their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents to see the world differently and hopefully reduce racism, um, hatred towards different religions and just everything in between. I think teachers can contribute to, you know, a better future for the kids by also taking the time to expand their knowledge more towards what's going on in the world and how we can teach our kids that this is what we're seeing, this is not right, and this is how we can change it. And just, you know, if you have a question in class, what do you do? You raise your hand. So we should be more open to raising our hand and asking the uncomfortable questions. Dear 10-year-old me, the advice that I would give to you is the more you grow up and the more that you become comfortable in your skin and comfortable with your story, the easier it will appear. <laughs> you know, there will be times where you feel like you belong and there will be times where you feel like you don't belong. Just know that it's not up to people to have a say as to where you belong in society or where they think you should fit in. And, you know, let your crown grow because this hair, is gold. <laughs>